So before we get into this, and we are talking about the Dynamite Report because it was Moxley and A.R. Fox and Chris Statlander and Emi Sakura. Listen, I don't mind every now and then doing an open challenge, okay? But, like, you're telling me that nobody cared about the international title except A.R. Fox. Like, he's the only one who cared? I, I, I don't like open challenges, which is an excuse to get somebody who's never won a championship match. It's lazy. It, it makes the championship look useless because, like, nobody else cared. Nobody else thought to stand in front of the door when the, you know, they all knew it was going to be an open challenge. A.R. Fox, what, slept in the building or whatever? Yeah. I mean, I don't like it, okay? Now, the argument about ra rankings. Well, if they had rankings, they could give them some wins. Just give them some wins. Exactly. You don't need rankings for that. It's like the argument, well, why do we need a brand split? Well, you know, uh, Fox wants some guys in USA, so we must do a brand split. To sp no, you don't have to do that. Just internally have half the people book for Saturdays, the other half book for Mondays. And if you need somebody on Saturday on Monday, you just do it. You don't have to come up with some stupid excuse. You don't need a brand split to have two brands. Just do it. You don't need rankings to give a guy a bunch of wins before he challenges John Moxley. Just have him do a bunch of wins. You know, Lenny here is like, oh, well, being the number one contender helped the hangman's right. You don't need rankings to announce that Hangman is the number one contender. He wins a whole bunch of matches, and then you say, he's the number one contender. One more big win, he gets a championship match or whatever, and then he screws it up. The rankings were, they, 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 it was more harm than good. Shouldn't yeah. say more harm than good, but like... It's a gimmick. Yeah, people no, look was. at it, you know, what? What? You know, padding the rankings. Well, this guy's, you know, 49 and zero, but they only beat jobbers. And then, like, you know, this guy, you know, he beats all the top stars, but he had a loss, so now he's not ranked. It, didn't, it never worked out, and it's been dropped, so I think Tony, you know, acknowledged that as well. But, you know, why is A.R. Fox getting a championship match? When's it ever worked It's nonsensical. Possibly? And then yeah. the other one, this tournament. You know, Dave talked about this tournament. And, uh, you know, everybody defending this tournament is defending it as if they are Tony Khan or they are invested as an investor in this company or something like that. I know you don't want to beat a top bunch of top stars. You're looking at this as the booker. Look at it as a viewer. We are having a championship match at Grand Slam. We're having a tournament to determine who will be the number one contender. It's a bunch of mid-carders. And Samoa Joe. I couldn't even tell you the last time Roderick Strong even wrestled. Nick Wayne, I don't think has ever won a singles match ever on this show. Uh, you know, who else is in the tournament that we've, we've seen of late? Like Darby. Darby. You know, Darby's at least a star. But, I mean, as a viewer, why are all of the biggest names in AEW, big-time star wrestlers, not in this tournament? The proper answer is not, well, we don't want to beat Takeshita. Yeah, I know that is a booker. But as a viewer, it makes the championship seem like, wow, okay, well, all right, cool. These these mid-card guys are going to get a shot or whatever. And then, you know, there's a defense. Well, you know, I like to see nobody's get a shot at the time. Okay, oh, that's, that's fine if you want to defend that's... absolutely everything that they do. Uh... But this doesn't make sense as a world title tournament to have only mid-carders and people who never win. It doesn't do it for me. I, li I like A.R. Fox versus Moxley. But, again, 13 matches, 12 losses, no singles matches ever. Inexplicably, eight championship matches this guy has had, none of which he's ever won, and here he is again. You muddy your own waters with all this sort of stuff. It doesn't make any sense. Ratings have never worked in wrestling, and the reality is ratings are a gimmick anyway. In boxing, where they're most traditionally used, they are used to get somebody a title shot. They have artificially pumped people up and put them in a top ten so they can say, oh, we can get the sanctioning money for this because this is a title match. In a perfect world, it would work, but the reality of the situation is it's got to be about 
as I mentioned earlier on, you've got to get credibility inside. These people have wins and losses. So when people see matchups again, this is psychology that you're actually pumping into people's brains too. When they see matchups against two guys, it's just, it's a frustrating thing. Too many tournaments, too many battle Royals, too many people involved in those things that shouldn't be there because in theory, also, if you're putting this on as an event, this is promotional malpractice. Why is a guy with AR Fox with no wins allowed to get a win? Why is not Nick Wayne in as opposed to the other, I don't know, pick 80 guys on the roster. And again, nothing against Nick Wayne, but you know what I mean by that. Doesn't make much sense. And then, you know, listen, Lenny, I love you, but like, if we load this thing up, then we get folks eating losses who shouldn't be. What are we talking about? Do you guys not watch New Japan Pro Wrestling? Load what? The up? G1 is not loaded up with mid card nothing. I mean, they're already they're in there. Well, this but like year. every top star is in the G1, and they all eat losses. Does that not happen every and year? But Brian, Brian, why do they do that? They do it because it either is setting up something later on down the line, which is what you do with wrestling with wins and losses. So somebody's got a card over this guy. And again, you can come back to it or it's got something to do with what's going on that Okada can't beat this person, but can always beat this person. Again, that stuff and it builds. You've got to invest in it and you got to start doing it because that's how you build it over time. And you obviously, they obviously, to me at least, need to reset a lot of their fans' minds into that mentality as opposed to some of the stuff that they're doing. Uh, DJ, this is in the G1. I know that. Ever dread here is in the G1 point base. You're missing the point. If you have got a tournament, I don't care if it's round robin. I don't care if it's a single elimination. If you're having a tournament for the world championship, then it should have all of your top stars and they need to lose and you get one winner at the end. If you don't want to do that, find another way to get a challenger for Grand Slam. You don't yeah. need to do a tournament. No. Uh, do do we really think they need to do a battle royal every other week on Rampage to determine a number one contender? They no. don't. There are other ways to make challengers. Sometimes you can just announce the match. MJF will be facing Samoa Joe, the Ring of Honor champion, at Grand Slam. Yeah, when you we don't stars, need you do an explanation for it, especially when the explanation is, well, he's the only star in a tournament of jobbers, and he happened to win. Okay, that's no better than just saying at Grand Slam, he will be facing MJF for the championship because he's the Ring of Honor champion. That's enough. Yeah, you build up enough guys, you can do it. Look, Swerve and, and to me, Swerve and Hangman was a great example of that because of the stock Swerve has been coming up. He's been fantastic. He can talk. Everybody knows he can go. People want him to be a main eventer. A lot of people do. You have Hangman who... Again, every AEW fan loves. He can cut enough of a promo to, to get by, but people love him in the ring, all that stuff. Perfect. Because you're able to do that because they have credibility. People believe in those two guys. You put them together. I mean, kind of that's the same way they got to Joe and MJF. They're such big stars. Joe, who doesn't believe in Joe as a character right now? Come on. Who, who doesn't believe in MJF? You were able to put them together. Sometimes... It's that simple when you've been taking care of the other things. So we're having a loaded tournament to set unrealistic expectations for a possible... Yes, it's a tournament for the world championship. I don't even watch sports. And when you're doing the playoffs, it's all of the best teams. They have earned their way there. There's no guarantee that anyone in the tournament is going to win in the end. The Super Bowl or whatever. Uh, I mean, Phillies last year. One of them's going to win, but that's it. That's what sports is. That's what tournaments are. The best are in the tournament, and somebody goes to the end of the tournament, and if that winner is going to get a championship match, they may not win. That's a tournament. Yes, that is what's supposed to happen. Look if you don't like it, don't book a tournament. Find another way to get a championship match out of it. Look at Rosendoza double zero going with the line item attack on you. One thing that you said, Darby Allen was a star, and then you said it was Joe and a bunch of jobbers. Brian, you said Darby was a star five minutes ago. Well, Defend you yourself. know what? He is a star. Okay? That's fine. Sorry. The two guys. Okay? Moxley beat AR Fox. Match was fun. 
Death Rider him, beat him. And then uh, Christian came out and, you know, he's trying to split up Nick and Darby. But, guys, it's Nick Wayne. He's 18 years old. It's Darby Allen. I do not think in the end these two are going to split. I could be wrong. I hope so. But I, oh I don't God, think I it's, so. it's going to happen. He could use a new stepfather. Chris Statlander beat Emmy Sakura. It was fine. Chris Statlander beat her with the uh, Wednesday Night Fever. And uh, what, what more do you do want me to say We have to name here? every damn I got move. four minutes left. <laughs> we had Aussie Open versus Jericho and Sammy. And uh, this was a really good match. And Jericho and Sammy won, but they also bonked into each other. And so when Jericho wanted to hold up Sammy's hand, Sammy fled. He just was like, he didn't want anything to do with it. He yanked his hand down. He left. And so, uh, spoiler, everybody. Uh, I won't do the spoiler. But there's there's more to come here in this story. We had an awesome Ricky Starks promo, but, I mean, it was abundantly clear watching this, dude needs to be a babyface. It took forever for people to boo the guy, and uh, and they still want to cheer him, and he's a way better babyface than heel. The people want to get behind the guy. So we'll see what he what he is when he comes back. Daniel Bryan should be a heel right now, and he was not for the past couple of days, but that's what he should revert to. Callis has a new painting we'll find out next week, as well as who Takeshka is going to be facing next. We had a great MJF Samoa Joe promo segment, which, again, just with this promo segment, we could have booked a main event with these two guys, not necessitating a tournament that Joe needs to win. So uh, Joe kept, you know, they went back and forth, and then there was a brawl, and then Joe went after his neck, and uh, MGF is selling it like his neck is all busted up. He cried. And MGF then cried. Roderick Strong's coming out for his match, and he starts yelling at Cole for caring more about the other guy's broken neck than his. And then he just takes off the neck brace. He beats Trent, and then his crew puts the neck brace back on him again because he's hurt. They care about his neck health. Yes. At a Hangman Page promo, Swerve came out, and they had an excellent back and forth. And Swerve just basically buried him for doing nothing over the last year and said, just ride off into the sunset and give your spot to me or man up, and you can show everybody what this cowboy stuff is all about. And so Hangman said, listen, if you want a match, just go get it, but quit bothering me here. So he goes to leave. Swerve mentions his family. Hangman starts heading back to the ring, and out comes Brian Cage to kill him with the drill claw, which is not, by the way, the death claw. But, you know, all these move names. Then we had Darby Allen, Nick Wayne in the main event. Man, this was almost straight out of uh, Buddy Wayne's garage, except they can't do dives there because the walls touch the ropes. But uh, this was a very, very good match. And uh, Christian comes out, and he sits on the ramp. And, you know, they go back and forth, and finally Darby... He could hit him with a coffin drop, but he just can't bring himself to do it. He almost gets pinned as a result, but then he puts Nick in a wacky lucha submission, stomps on his head. Bryce Remsburg stops it. So this coming Saturday on Collision, Darby will be facing Roderick Strong in a tournament match, who is determined to go through this tournament all by himself with a broken neck, even though he doesn't wear a neck brace, and his crew is out there with him the entire time. <laughs> I think Roddy's winning the tournament. And then Very Samoa well Joe and MJF probably at the uh, pay-per-view coming up on October 1st. Here in Seattle, by the way. That should be exciting. I'm calling it Down Granny's Memory Lane. Are you oh. reading from your memoirs? Yes. No, no, okay. no. That's past. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is new That's, stuff. This is more up-to-date. You know, I'm I more... see. Okay. This is the more recent stuff. Yeah, new old stuff. I just no, said. No, no, okay. no, no. The <laughs> New Testament. Everyone let her go. We lived on a farm 10 miles east of Baker. More and... recent, you say? <laughs> I was going to say, this isn't new. No, this is old. It's old. Okay. Okay. Who said new? I didn't say new. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, we're just going to be quiet. And you, Am I out of my you, mind? No, yes, we're all out of our minds. <laughs> now I'm upset. <laughs> no, stop. <laughs> I'll, I, I'm fining Vinny. Vinny, you're being fined $100. Oh. It was Martell's and Heaps. <laughs> the Hebes. The Hebes. And the Hebes only had one daughter named Alice. Yeah. What's so funny about the name? The Hebes? The daughter Alice, uh, she knew how to yodel, and she was what, what she'd call nowadays a rebel. The yodeling rebel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Granny, if I may interrupt, what did they call her back then? 
Dallas. Okay. <laughs> You thought I wasn't going to like this segment, Granny? <laughs> this is the best segment we've had on the show in years. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the Join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click Join today and don't miss out.